Okay. Tuesday section of the lesson starts off by saying we should read Hebrews 4. Let's go to Hebrews 4, and I'm reading from the 21st century King James Version. It says, Let therefore fear, lest a promise being left for us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as, as, well as unto them. But the word preached did not benefit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter into rest, as he said. I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were done from the foundation of the world. For he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day. In this way, God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter in because of unbelief. Again he designated a certain day, saying, In David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not have afterwards spoken of another day. There remained therefore a rest for the people of God. For he has entered into his rest. He has also ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall according to the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This text, how does this text, this passage, relate with, with, with Jeroboam and his syndrome? Because it kind of seemed to be going left of field. I, I am not able to make a straight line between this particular passage and Jeroboam. We might have to think and search about this. Um... So, it says in someone's explanation or synopsis of the chapter, it says that God gives those who obey him everything needed to accomplish their assigned tasks. So, Jeroboam was not obedient. Mm -hmm. In fact, he led the children of Israel into idolatry. Mm -hmm. He chose persons to be... Priest. Um, priests mm. who were not Fitted. from the mm -hmm. tribe of Levi's, mm. right? So he disobeyed God. Now, it is said because the entire system of holy days, sacrifices, and worship, and etc., was changed mm -hmm. into this man made system. So clearly, Jeroboam. Um, was disobedient. He was not able to reap the mm. blessings. Mm -hmm. He, he um, you know, changed the, well, I don't know if, if the days of worship was changed under mm. his rulership. He did. he did. When we read yesterday, he chose, he chose a particular day that they said was not um, one of the days. Mm. Like, you know, there were set days mm. and he did something outside of, outside of that. that mm. I think that is the, um, First Kings 13, that last section there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So because of all that he did, he was not able to reap the blessings that would accompany, um, you know, following and obeying God and led the children of Israel into um, idol worship. Okay. Uh, there. So this one, this one requires a little more uh, study to get a better understanding of this uh, chapter on a, on a whole. But there are a few things that... That, that pop out the idea of the seventh day hmm, is found is found here people like to talk about the seventh day being something that is only found in the old testament but we see the seventh day being made reference to here right and the concept of belief and a promise so if there's a promise made and we don't believe we won't benefit from that particular promise you, you had a point Right. So it, it goes on to say, um, you know, it was a double tragedy mm -hmm. that Jeroboam brought on the house of Israel. And God had made a promise to David that if he was obedient and mm -hmm. he, you know, walk in his in his um, in his commands and all of that mm -hmm. and obey his decrees and his commands and whatever, he would bless David. Right. He will build a dynasty that mm -hmm. was enduring. Mm -hmm. Right. But because of Jeroboam's sin now, he spurned God's goodness mm -hmm. and he it brought the demise, it led to the demise of Israel, mm -hmm. right? And it says in 1 Kings 13, 34, that the sin of the house of Jeroboam led to its downfall and its destruction from mm -hmm. the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. So because Jeroboam was not obedient and followed the commands of God and led the children of Israel into idol worship and, you know, basically mm -hmm. turned the whole system Ups upon its head, mm -hmm. the whole nation of Israel so was led, led, to, okay. led into destruction. All right, all right fine. Um, two other little points from, from this. Uh, there is a saying here, we, we often hear it, today, if we hear the voice, mm -hmm. harden not your heart. Mm -hmm. So the, this verse gives us the idea that or how it is popularly used is God is calling, right? We often hear it at um, altar calls and so on. You know, when the pastor is finished today, if you if you if you're here, you know, hard not your heart. Mm -hmm. So there is something within us too that if we get that sense that we ought to act, then we should we should you know we should we should act. That's something that um, you know we we need to remember. Okay, um, it says the, the, the part about Joshua and the rest, you know, that the children of Israel would have been in Egypt for some time and they look forward to going into the promised land, right? Where they would have gotten rest from, um, you know, Pharaoh and rest from their wilderness experience and so on. But that was an earthly rest. What? we can look forward to here is the the rest mm -hmm. from all of the things that are associated with this world the curse is the curse of sin mm -hmm. and everything that it brings with it mm -hmm. so uh, i look at this and say no, the earthly rest is one but we need to look forward to that heavenly rest mm -hmm. as well what are the things that we need to be doing now to to line up ourselves so that we can benefit mm -hmm. from that heavenly rest mm -hmm. as well and going back to Matthew and so on, Jesus says, come unto me, right? And I will, I will give you rest. All right. Another, another one that um, pops out is the, the word of God. There in verse 12, the word of God is living the word. That's why it's so important that we read it. You know? mm -hmm. it, um, it is living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even dividing asunder, soul and spirit. Sometimes you get a conviction. When you read something, you're convicted by it. Why? Because it cuts to your what? Soul and to your spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? And joint and marrow. Now, this is a part that is interesting. Last phrase. And is a discerner of the thoughts and in tints of the heart so sometimes you get a conviction is because you know mm -hmm. the word is reaching deep inside of you right and then it talks now about um jesus being our high priest and that 
there was, you know, he was tempted in all ways as we are. And I can remember, I think it was last week, uh, in last week's lesson, where it says, um, 1 Corinthians 10, I think 13, or 13 or 31, where it says, we never get a temptation that we cannot bear. He has, he has given us enough, mm -hmm. um, you know, strength mm -hmm. to bear the temptation mm -hmm. or he will provide a way of escape and here it is it says that jesus our high priest for we do not verse 15 we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin, without sin. okay so that 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 helps us now it says let us therefore come boldly last verse boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need mm -hmm. so in time of need we shouldn't what is this saying as young people in time of need where should we look so when when i have my sbas and they're on top of my head when i have a situation where my friends are treating me poorly when I have a situation where I'm I'm tempted to engage in, you know, bad things, mm -hmm. what we are should I should be looking to the throne of grace, because that is where we will find help in the time of need. Yes, I know that it might not be a, a direct link to the Jeroboam, um, Jeroboam situation here, but Jeroboam should have done that. Mm -hmm. Come to think of it, he had a political problem, mm -hmm. right? His problem was he feared. That the people going to Rehoboam and to, to, to Judah, to Jerusalem, to worship, was going to turn the hearts of the people back to, to, to him. Mm -hmm. So what he should have done, he should have said, listen God, help me to do the right thing. And going back to the lesson, you know, I think Ellen White points out that, you know, it says here, marinate your mind on Ellen White's statement. Jeroboam was in the position to bring about wise reform in both civil mm. and religious affairs mm. but he failed to make god his trust and, he, and, and to turn to god. he failed right so turning to god is what we should do right and that can be found in prophet and kings page 99 another section here says we should read psalm 91 then we should write um, our own psalm that expresses the need and desire to put trust in god and they say you can use the notes at the the notes pages at the back of the uh, study guide to write your own psalm let's look now at psalm 91 whoever dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in whom i trust Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampant. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. Mm. You will trample the great lion and the serpent because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue you. I will protect you for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Interesting. So again, uh, another passage of scripture that talks about putting our trust in him. 
and how he can deliver us from many, many um, problematic situations. There's something that jumps out here. You know that the enemy can use Bible verses against you. Mm-hmm. Did you try use it against Jesus? Which one? When he took him into the wilderness to tempt him. Good. Here it says, um, well, he didn't take him into the wilderness to well, tempt him. him. Yes. But let's go with this one. It says here, you remember when he was placed on, I think, the, the, the pinnacle of some high place? And he said, cast yourself down. Mm-hmm. Right? And here is a reference. Angel charge, over. charge over you. Mm-hmm. Right? Why? Lest you what? Dash, it. Dash your foot against a, a stone. So say, here, they will bear you up. Right? For he shall give your what? Give his angels charge over thee and keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So it is possible for people to twist the scriptures mm-hmm. to get you to do mm-hmm. that which is wrong. Mm-hmm. Because here it was that that the, the enemy was saying to him, just do this. And what was Jesus' response to, to that? What was the response? Any, anybody remembers? I think this response was, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. All right. Let, let, let's go. All right. So in, in Matthew 4, we see, we see the whole temptation situation. It says, Then Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So it was the Spirit that led him there. And he was had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and afterward he was and hungered you can imagine being without physical food for 40 days some of us can't even go 40 minutes without physical food and the tempter came to him and he said if thou be the son of god command these stones to be made bread right um so again sometimes people will play on your potential and what it is that you have, you are capable of doing. I know that you can play music. Come play the music at this party. You, you can play music good, right? So it, there, within the, the, the offer, right, is, is a kind of flattery to you, you know. Like, boy, I mean, we, we know say you're good on this already, right? But the end of it is not something that is good. Cool? Um, yes. If thou be the son of God, you, you command these stones to be made bread. Again, it's important for us to remember appetite. The first thing, the first thing that he was tempted on was appetite, food, desires. We have to be able to overcome our desires. And they say Adam and Eve fell to appetite, physical appetite, mm-hmm. but Jesus right here overcame that mm-hmm. temptation. All right, it, it, it continues here. It says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The devil, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. Right? So going back to the Psalm 91 now. And he said, If thou be the Son of God, Cast down thyself, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee, charge concerning thee, and in uh, their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Right? So here it is. Here's the link from the the tempter. The devil uh, is using the scriptures to tempt Jesus. Right, and he responds. Uh, Jesus says, um, "It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God." Okay. Again, do you notice the the subtlety in the temptations? It keeps playing. Oh, but but if you say yes, son of God, then prove it. Mm. Just do this, man. You have the power to do it. Do it. Mm. Right. We have to be very careful of people coming to us um, and saying, "Hey, I know you can do this." Right? 
because it plays into our ego. Of course, we can prove so we can do that. A lot of boys get into trouble. Yo, yo you can't jump off of that. You, you can't do that. Me can't swim better than that. Why best swimmer out here, so? And a lot of us end up into trouble. Um, let's just round this part out with the last uh, bit of the temptation. And the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus, Unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the Lord, then the devil leaveth um, him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. It stops there. L let's go with this um, last part. You know, there's a lot of saying out there that people sell them soul, right? And they get position and they get wealth and they get all of those things in exchange for worshiping um the enemy right but let's look at jesus jesus's response um jesus says you should worship so the yes the whole concept of worship comes up again who shall we worship how shall we worship this idea of worship is baked in so how we respond. Um, one of the lessons, we, we say that, guess what? Jeroboam, who you worship? Can you worship um, the way that you are expected to worship? And who who was, when him set up the two, the, the, the idols, who them I worship now? It can't be the same God that would have led them out of, of, of Egypt. So the concept of worship is very important to us and we must make the decision to worship in spirit and in truth. Let me ask this. Was it Jeroboam's intent, and I don't know how it will come across, was it his intent to, to lead the children of Israel into idol worship or did he set up these idols and thought that they would be representative of God? Do you uh, understand the question? Yes, I understand the question. So let us say he is not necessarily saying, guess what? These the things are really, are, these God. things are God. Mm -hmm. These things are really but these God. these are just representations. These are just representations of God. Mm. Fine, fair enough. But what did Exodus tell us? 20. It says, you should not, not make, make unto image. thee any graven image. Mm -hmm. Anything that is in the heavens above, on the earth, mm -hmm. or in the seas beneath, mm -hmm. right? So just that alone, him already, already down the wrong path, mm -hmm. because you're not supposed to make any representations and put it before thee. Not only that, watch this. Remember now, too, they would have had the, the history of Israel before them, you know, mm. to know that, for example, in the time of judges and so on, mm. to know that, hey, this idol thing, anytime we go there, bad things happen. Mm. Anytime we, we, we disobey and we start to worship the other gods, some serious plagues and enemies take us over and all of those things. Did we forget about Jeroboam? Did we forget about those things? I asked the question against the context that um, is it possible that sometimes we can um, set up something seemingly good mm -hmm. um, with the intent that this is really, you know, uh, giving adoration and praise to God, but in fact, mm -hmm. it is not serving in that particular capacity, capacity mm -hmm. but it is there as an idol. All right, watch this now. So... It is said the road to hell mm. is paved with good intentions. You could have the best intentions in the world. Mm. Let's go back to Cain and Abel. Mm. Cain and Abel were asked to make a what? A sacrifice. Mm. And the man come with him sacrifice. Mm. But was it the right one? The intent was right. Let me give unto the Lord what he asked for. Mm. Mm. No. 
there's a way in which it is supposed to be done right and i guess the most uh, compelling part of this is we have to be in that state that state where if it is we find out that we're doing something that is not aligned with what God wants. Are we willing to take the step back and say, let us get back? Because that's what the lesson says here. The lesson says he had the opportunity, right? He had the opportunity to do what? To, to have both reform, civil reform, and religious, religious reform, mm -hmm. right? In matters of, 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 of politics and how they... I guess how the taxes were done because that would have been the thing that would have one of the factors that led to him getting into power, right? Because Solomon was taxing the people to maintain his lavish lifestyle and then the son came and said, listen, if you think my father did whip you with whips, me I got to deal with you with scorpion and, and stuff like that. So he had that opportunity to pull um, the, 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 the nation together but it was lost because he did not uh you know believe and trust in in god mm -hmm. that's it for for this particular section any other thoughts any final thoughts on this section um i think it's a reminder um that we should obey god to receive the blessings that are attendant with obedience and disobedience will lead to our ultimate demise. I think that is a central point that comes out of Tuesday's lesson.